blessings, and welcome to the FSU Our Histories Here podcast, Volume 2. In Volume 1, we took a look at ourselves, the Friends of SU Alumni Group, founded in 1975 and officially established with Syracuse University in 1977. Many of our founders and their classmates have been pioneers in their efforts to change the minds of those who systematically attempted to hold back and limit the socially conscious and intelligent creations of students of color. In Volume 2, we invite you to listen and learn about alumni who share their Syracuse University experience and how it influenced their careers and lives. Some of them are innovators and participators of clubs, businesses, along with campus and community traditions. This is the FSU Our History is Here podcast. Welcome to Volume 2, Episode 4. In this episode, we'll let Gibson continues to share her reasons why she does not plan on stepping foot on the SU campus. She also explains how the university changed her educational grant program sponsored by New York State for students of color. We'll let continues to give credit to her SU alums, Greg Williams, and her friend Betty Thompson, who saw this class project turn into a major program, the Afro-American Studies Department, a.k.a. the Black Studies Program. You know, is 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 like you know, it's just, and I've experienced more of it here in in Orange County. Yeah. You know, years ago, I worked in in marketing research. I've interviewed people all over the world just doing marketing research, and I yes. remember one, I was the one here in the United States. You know, mm. and this guy and I, and he said, and he just said, "Ask where I was from," and I told him where I was from, and he said. Um, he said, you know, what, well, what, I don't how it came in us some music. He said, what ethnic group are you? I said, I'm black. Mm-hmm. He says, no, you can't be. You sound too intelligent. That's Whoa. Me. Whoa. Yeah. 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 You, you got to walk away like, okay, mm, I see that you're intellectually below my level. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Their, their perception yeah. of you. Yeah. You know, and it's like. And even like friends, you know, because, you know, all my friends here, I don't have any black friends in Orange County. Okay. Now, black people here are really peculiar. Mm. I've been here over four years. Yeah. I, I have them up in L.A. County. I have them in, in sure. other counties. Makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. But not here in Orange County. They, you know, yeah. it, it's just, it's different. It's, you know, whatever. <laughs> but, um, you know, getting back to Syracuse. Yes. Yeah. You know, those people, yeah. Talk to Alfreda I will. She's on my list. Her yeah. and Eddie, yeah, definitely, for sure. And and uh, Miss yeah. Thomas, yeah, you know, and Betty Ed Thomas. Brown. Ed Brown is still alive, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's doing big things. Pan-Africanism he's doing. He's visiting Africa. He's doing some mighty good things. Hmm. Oh, yeah. Good for him. Byron Merritt? Yes. I know that name. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Well, he was, he was like the forerunner of, uh, you know, of Operation Spearhead. But you should really, you know, because it was almost fun because we were kids. You know, right. we were just children, but we accomplished so much, you know, but when I hear your later generations like Janelle, you know, from Miami talking about, well, did the black students even in, even support those players? When yeah. I'm thinking, you know, she didn't know. I knew without, without reading the book, I know, of course it did because they were going through the same thing, but even worse that you're elevated as a player, but still they had to go through that, that stuff that we didn't even know about until they told you. Yeah. Did you read the book? Yes. It was so painful. It was worse than I remembered, and I lived through that period. I was trying to imagine yeah. one. Wow! I, I don't. I, I, my biggest thing was, what I would I have done? And it was worse because they didn't tell us everything they were going no, through. They weren't. You going know. To. Yeah. Come on. They were. We pro- were dealing with so many other issues. You know, my roommate with the Confederate flag on her desk. I know. You know. Uh, moving to Brockway, you know, and they had this community board there where any group or whatever could put up a display for Black History Month. We put up a display mm-hmm. of, of of poems and pictures from students from Martin Luther King uh, Grammar School there, yeah. you know. And and I found that this white student there, you know, she wrote 
things on the wall about it and ripped some of them down. I found who she was. And being from North New Jersey, I showed up at her door with a razor in my hand. Oh, yeah. No, I understand. See, I'm sorry. You know, and I said to her, you know, that display is going back up. And yeah. if you touch it again, I will cut I'm you. I'm going to cut you. Every which way but <laughs> loose. <laughs> no, I'm familiar with that term. Yes. And we, you know, we keep that within us. We can carry ourselves. We knew, we knew how to decode. Mm-hmm. Very well. You learned that quick up You there. know, and it was just, it was a, a very hostile environment. And, you know, it was something, you know, but, you know, it, it was it's part of my learning. It's like, you know, I said, I live in a white community. You know, and my son had to deal with this crap when I moved him out of here. But I said, no, you got to learn early. Right. You know, right. It, it was not easy when we first came here. No. My son heard words he had never heard when we were in Newark briefly. Right. You know, and uh, growing up in a hostile environment here, and I had to deal, you know, with uh, principals and teachers. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. You know, and it was, you know, but I just felt you need to learn early that, you know, uh, what I learned at Syracuse, because like I said, coming from a warm, loving community, black community in in North New Jersey. Yes. And going up to that hostile environment at Syracuse University, and like I said, no, I, I won't, I'm sorry. Uh, I, you know, uh, that's my weakness as a Christian. I'm just not into forgiveness. Right. I, I won't set foot on that campus again. I took my son up there because he was born here and I thought that's where I should put him. But I will never set foot on that campus again. Mm-hmm. No. In my opinion, I did more for Syracuse University than it ever did for me. I hear you. Thanks. But, you know, you know, to get the details on it, you got to talk to Betty Thompson, you talk to Alfreda Kenny, you know, you, you talk to Bobby Hamilton, you know, you talk to Ed Brown, you, right. you talk to Byron Definitely. Merritt, you know, it's, you know, we were all there. All right. Well, we were all there. Well, yeah, that gives it. Was, I have to say that I really enjoy talking with you. And you know what? I am going to catch up with you again. We can get to some more stuff because I know you hold some great history. And I know all of it wasn't the best, but you've shown. And then the, and I think those who are listening will realize, man, they'll think about what they did during their time. Because, you know, when I got involved, I, I got involved with the radio station, WAER. When you were there, I think it was the Quonson Hut and stuff. And when they built the buildings, uh, M, what's his name, M. Pei, built the um, the new house school, and the radio uh-huh. station went there, um, I got involved and eventually became the minority affairs director. And I ran my crew, and we had a good, like you had your crew of people, I had my crew of people so good that when the station had a thing called All News Week, and during February, mm-hmm. we ran the station for Black History Month, and... They wanted some of my people to do news. But prior to that, when they try out for the news department, they weren't good enough. But once I shined, let them shine, they're like, oh, they're all good. I'm like, yeah, what do you think? Stop giving them restrictions. Let them be who they are, and you'll see the natural talent. And after that, a lot of them became a part of the regular uh, news stage news station and we kept them doing special features and things. We had black news. I mean it was it was awesome. So yes, I thank you for what you did. So I think a lot of things you did help us transcend to keep it going. And you know, my job is to make sure that the millennials and those who come afterwards, whoever is on that can- campus, making sure that they recognize who you are, you have everything that you need, and you are being seen equivalently, equally if not higher, than those who are there. So I, I well, appreciate I, I appreciate that. You know, I'll keep in touch. You know, yes. I, I, like I said, I went last summer for my 50th high school reunion. Uh, I'm 3,000 miles away. Uh-huh. I don't think I'll be getting back to New Jersey in this life. But I still care about what's going on there. It's my home. Right. Uh, you know, it's a part of thing. You know, when I, uh, I, I flew all night from California. Okay. You know, you, you do, you do a red eye when you're coming. It's because you're flying against time. Right. You know, and I ended up in the lobby of the hotel where we're doing our thing, and I'm having a cup of coffee because we've been flying all night. And a friend from high school came down. I hadn't seen him in 30 years because I went for my 20th. And he's got his wife, and he's introducing me, and she says, "Oh, you're from California." 
And I said, no, I'm from New Jersey. I just live in California. Right. You know, it's like, I'm a Jersey girl. Right, you know? right, right. You know, it's a whole different thing. Uh, you know, you had sent me, you know, some information on how to access what's going on in New Jersey. And Cheryl Gibson, uh, you know, the daughter of Kenneth Gibson. Yes. Uh, she's a classmate of mine. Oh. You know, and at the reunion, you know, we were at the reception the night before, uh, sitting at the bar, we're having dinner and a drink, and we're talking, and we're catching up. And we weren't actually friends when we were in high school. But, you know, it's like, you know, 50 years later. And I'm asking about our dad. He said, well, you know, he's going through memory lapses and early Alzheimer's and blah, blah, blah. And we're doing fine. And I asked her about, you know, Cory Booker. Yes. You know, and... What I've heard from other classmates, I don't know, because I'm 3,000 miles away. They don't really care for them. Listen to the FSU Our History is Here podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and IG at Friends of SU. Every Sunday at 12 noon, look for a new episode and log on to www.theofficialfriendsofsu.com to hear past and current volumes. Our theme song is On the Clock by Pictures of the Floating World. FSU, Our History is Here is produced by another BMG Production 2020.